All right, before this commercial break, Rick Wells took us back to Oklahoma's centennial when a buried 1957 Plymouth Belvedere was brought back above ground. That was a beautiful idea. It didn't go as planned. Rick is here to talk to us today about that event. And Rick, like so many people, uh, you watched this all unfold on television. Really exciting when it was buried, yeah? Well, yeah, and for those of us who just came to Tulsa, like you all, because I, I told Brian this story in the hallway, and he said, they did what? <laughs> it's a what? crazy concept at the well, time. Yeah. It was nuts. And it was crazy time when it was a, a due to come up. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we all had a vision that this thing was going to be pristine, going to crank the ignition, it's going to start up, and somebody's going to drive it away. Well, it, it, that didn't happen. But <clears throat> there is apparently a society somewhere that tracks time capsules. And they told Sharon King Davis that Tulsa was the only place in the entire world that had a car buried as a time capsule. And uh, in 2007, when they dug this one up, we had another one buried. Yeah, they thought this idea was so grand. <laughs> that's right. Try it a second well, this, time. Well, that's right. Yeah. But you know, they, they did that before <laughs> this, before right. they saw this. But it's a it's a Plymouth Prowler. And if you drive down 6th Street across from the DFW, there's a hump there and it says Centennial Time Capsule. And there is a Plymouth Prowler in there along with a lot of other stuff. But this time, uh, the technology of, you know, 1998 hopefully will do a better job of preserving the car than the 1957 technology did. Yeah, we sure hope so. <laughs> We would like that to go a little bit more smooth. Well, but what it, was but the reaction? I mean, was it was it comical or were people actually, you know, genuinely disappointed? No, well, you saw you saw Sharon King Davis in there. I mean, she's in, uh, had as the chairman of this thing invested so much of her emotions into. Sure. And then you know you looked in the hole and you thought, oh my god, but you couldn't really see the car because of the covering, but you could just imagine. And, Seeing the water. I mean, yeah. she just started to cry, and uh, you know, but then. When they brought it over to the convention center and all these people are in there, you know, it was still really exciting. It's still very cool. I yeah. mean, yeah. But you you said that this thing's so waterlogged. Uh, when you told me the story in the hallway, that was a, a grand reaccount of what there happened. There were, like, the you could put trunk your, lid. Uh, your foot could go through the Ford motor. Well, that's right. Yeah. And, and it was like cardboard in some places. It was so, you know, it had rusted so badly. But... <laughs> Somebody in '57 buried a case of Schlitz beer in the in the along with the car in the trunk of the car, and we were all kind of, you know, what Schlitz beer tastes like that's been underground for 50 years. Well, you couldn't. I mean, the cans were rusted, and they, you know, no drinking that beer. No drinking that beer. Yeah. Any any beer underground right now in the new car? Not that I know of. Okay. Missed opportunity. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You know. It's amazing. I mean, so many people will remember this and still talk about this, I'm sure, to this Absolutely. day. Absolutely. And and as I said in the story, it was disheartening. It was just, it was, you know, but it's a Tulsa memory, and right. it's the coolest thing. Yeah. Well, and you've been here for 30-plus years, uh, so yes. you've, you've seen a lot, and this one certainly seen Well, and I saw the, the Plymouth Prowler go into the mm -hmm. time capsule, so. When know, does that baby come out? Uh, 2048. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to be here. Uh, you but you, you will be. You never know. Yeah, All right, Rick. Right. Thank you so much no, you for bet. being here today. Yeah. All right. So, 